Yes. One of the most pressing issues, perhaps, that was discussed is the NATO eastward expansion. Russia objects to that, seeing it as a potential threat. And this is what the Russian president had to say on Russia's view on NATO's going east. A powerful military bloc appearing near our borders will be perceived in Russia as a direct threat to the security of our country. Statements claiming that this process is not directed against Russia are not satisfactory to us. National security is not built on promises, especially since we have had similar promises prior to the previous waves of the bloc's expansion. Now, of course, that wasn't the only issue that was raised, and the journalist did want to know about all of the issues that Russia has expressed its opinion upon. One of those touched uh, was the status of the CFE treaty. Russia wants a new, a ratified version to be adopted, but since it hasn't happened, Russia has pulled out of that treaty, and the status of it was discussed at length. A lot of members of the press got to put their question forward. Amongst them was my colleague, Alexandra Kosharnitska, who managed to put in a question about uh, some Western sources saying that a membership within the alliance automatically makes the, the country's status a democratic one. Was that true? And did the Russian president agree? There are many countries in the world which nobody would ever say are non-democratic, but they are not NATO members. Does it make them less democratic? Or take the case of Ukraine. If it had been accepted into NATO, would it have become a democracy? What, is it not a democracy now? Entry to NATO, unfortunately, doesn't result automatically in the further democratization of any country. NATO is not a democratizator. Let's take the Baltic countries. In Latvia, there are hundreds of thousands of non-citizens, aliens, and such a state has been criticized by international organizations. This is a non-democratic state of society, and entry to NATO hasn't changed a thing for those hundreds of thousands of people. So this idea of NATO as a democratizing instrument has been overblown. The NATO Secretary General, Yabtohops Heffer, when giving his press conference after meeting with the Russian president, said that despite the fact that issues remain, certain issues remain unresolved, there's a general good vibe to the discussion and the dialogue. Both sides are very eager to show that they're trying to look for compromises, willing to see eye to eye and want to reach agreements. And they certainly have made certain agreements, including uh, supplies of humanitarian aid to Afghanistan through Russian territories and many other important aspects of cooperation. In the framework of a practical cooperation, uh, I think we saw uh, an interesting uh, example in the sense that uh, Russia and NATO uh, have embarked upon a common joint effort uh, to help uh, Afghanistan. Uh, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and I uh, early this morning uh, signed a transit agreement, a transit arrangement in support uh, for, the, uh, for the ISAF uh, mission. And that means, uh, as you might know, that non-lethal uh, military goods for ISAF can be transported uh, through uh, Russian uh, territory. So nearly a half an hour's worth of questions from international media, all desperate to hear what Vladimir Putin had to say. And it certainly seemed when they were coming out, they were very satisfied with what was said and heard. And President Putin also took the opportunity to explain why Russia is not interested in joining NATO. Russia does not aspire to be a NATO member, thank God. In terms of providing for our safety, we are a self-sufficient country, and we don't intend to sacrifice part of our sovereignty to create the illusion of increasing our security. But we intend to cooperate with NATO as well as with other international organizations. And President Putin has clearly expressed his views on NATO's movement closer to Russian borders. And he said that the North Atlantic Treaty is still in force and that Russia's position should be respected. No one has gotten rid of the Washington Agreement. We have liquidated our bases in Cameroon in Vietnam and Cuba. We have moved our troops out of Eastern Europe and got rid of heavy arms in Europe in general. But what did we get in return? A base in Romania, where we are now, a base in Bulgaria, AMD bases in Poland and the Czech Republic. This is all a movement of military infrastructure closer to our borders. Why don't we talk about this in the open, honestly and directly, with all our cards laid out on the table? We want open dialogue. 
And also speaking about the eight years of his term, Putin said he's glad his ten years coming to an end and promised journalists there will be some interesting times ahead with his successor. Like any person who is responsible about his or her official duties, I'm looking forward to shifting this burden from my shoulders to the shoulders of another man. As they say in my country, there is nothing to be sorry about. I'm demob happy. It's the end of my tenure. I think I've been working hard and efficiently. As for my successor, he's very well educated, and I think you'll have some interesting times with him.